Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. The chart that you should be looking at right now, this is EUU. So after, as I got into the uh, financial management industry, and investor education, brokerages, things like this. Uh, one of the things that I really saw missing when uh, Forex trading started taking off in uh, the early 2000s amongst individual traders uh, was they, they had a very binary choice, um, meaning that they could go long the euro USD, you know, the, the, the euro versus the dollar, or they could be short. But but there really wasn't any in between. So they, they were long or short, and they applied stop losses. And you know, uh, equity traders, um, uh, traders in the futures market, et cetera, have had the, a, a much broader range of products to be able to uh, uh, create a better blend for their trading strategies and their own risk objectives because they had access to products like options. So I've, I've been very passionate about the introduction of the ISIS Forex options, FX options, uh, since they first came out because it's, it's finally kind of opening that up. Now, for those of you, I, I, I know that there are some of you already uh, here in the audience who have some experience trading in the Forex, particularly in the spot Forex. So, uh, and that, that, industry, that particular product is in a state of flux right now in that there's a lot of changes coming down from the CFTC as far as leverage is concerned, and that's introduced some constraints in the way that um, uh, traders are, have been operating in the Forex. And I think, once again, this kind of is an opportunity for FX options to prove how valuable they can really be. So I'm pretty jazzed about the fact that they're, uh, the, that they're available at this point. Now, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is to walk through a couple of concepts as to you know, how might we use Fibonacci analysis to answer a couple of questions. Um, uh, relative to making trades in the uh, FX options market. And then I have a quick case study to, to kind of wrap up my point as to how would I do this kind of analysis today. You know, if I were looking across the major currencies available, uh, uh, how would I make a, you know, how would I do a sample analysis today? Uh, so let's start out by looking at EUU. Now, EUU is essentially uh, the euro versus the dollar, the euro-dollar pair, if you will. And so if you were to, right now, EUU is priced at 1.35.1. I'm sorry, 135.1. If you were to move that decimal place over just two places, what that basically means is that it costs, or to buy one euro, it costs $1.35. So the fact that uh, the, the, thing, or the, the EUU has been trending down right. Uh, lately, there's been actually a fair amount of dollar strength out there in the market. Uh, I think that um, uh, to a certain extent, that's uh, uh, just related to the risk uh, environment out there. I think a lot of traders are a little bit nervous about you know outstanding risk issues, and so they're, they, when risk is going up in the market, the dollar uh, does sometimes uh, benefit from that because. Traders will look for safer assets denominated in dollars and look for even just to hold dollars. Uh, I think that's been kind of uh, uh, amplified by the fundamental factors that we're dealing with in the Eurozone where um, we have uh, uh, some credit problems. So you've got some countries in the Eurozone dealing with uh, uh, you know, creditworthiness issues. So uh, Greece, Portugal, uh, Ireland, et cetera, uh, are all having some problems. And so that's that, – that, that, that's bad for the euro and, once again, kind of good for the dollar uh, comparatively. So that winds up being this downward trend, which means that the dollar is essentially strengthening against the euro, or the euro is falling in value uh, over the last little while. But the question becomes, when we're trading Forex options, is, well, all right, so fine. Uh, I think the trend is overall negative uh, on this particular uh, currency pair. How do I determine... Uh, where and, and when I might want to make a trade, to especially if I'm looking at a short term uh, on a short term basis. Uh, well, you know, Fibonacci's can be a really handy tool to be able to do that, and because options, 
uh, if you're trading long options or a spread or something like that, oftentimes you have um, you, you already have a known maximum risk and a known maximum gain uh, in advance. So it's, it makes it really easy to plan. And being able to answer the, the where and when questions uh, is helpful as we plan around things like expiration. So you know, if we were making very short-term trades today, and uh, maybe trading options that expire in, in March, well, we have, what, about 25 days or so uh, before that expiration occurs. So we'd need to make some, we'd need to plan ahead a little bit. And uh, I, I hope to be able to introduce a couple of ideas today in how would we, how would we do some of, that, uh, uh, some of that planning. Okay, so uh, right now the Euro USD is in a downtrend. And uh, when I am talking about Fibonacci uh, retracements, I'm usually talking about two things. Either, so let's go back in time a little bit. I'm going to scroll uh, a little bit back in time here. So we're just looking at what happened. In, we're going to look in the past for a couple of illustrations, and then we're going to do a little case study here at the end of the presentation into uh, you know, what's going on right now. How would we apply these same principles today? So EUU, um, uh, I've just applied a, a kind of a traditional Fibonacci retracement. Uh, these are the lines you normally see. If you're not familiar with a Fibonacci retracement, it's essentially the tool that divides the trend into uh, three or four layers. Um, so you know, in this case, I've, I've identified the trend. I've anchored the trend line from the top of the decline in uh, early December, uh, very, very late November, to the middle of December. So that, that initial run down, and then finally the market started to move back up again, and we've, we've got our little trend segment here. So, and, and what the Fibonacci retracement tool does is it basically divides that, uh, that trend into these little segments here that, that are based on the Fibonacci number series. Uh, they're, they're essentially the ratio between uh, sequential numbers and the, in the uh, Fibonacci number series. So everything from 23% of the way through the trend to 61% of the way through the trend. Each one of these lines becomes a candidate uh, resistance level if we're looking for, a, if we're measuring a bounce up. So our prior trend was down, so we're looking for these lines to kind of identify a resistance level on the bounce. And uh, so each one of these becomes a candidate for that. So if we see the market pause at one of those levels and then begin to decline, we'd, we'd definitely want to pay attention to that. Now, <clears throat> sometimes, depending on the length of the prior trend, these lines can be pretty close together. So we, we, we want to watch out for that. Uh, uh, you know, if I'm using a daily chart, I like to see a trend that's you know, fairly robust that I'm applying, or a trend segment, rather, that's fairly robust that I'm applying a Fibonacci tool because the smaller that trend is, let me show you. If I were to anchor this further up the trend, you can see these, these little uh, uh, subdivisions of the trend segment become tighter and tighter, and it would be hard, much more difficult to tell the difference. So if you're, um, when you're using Fibonacci analysis, that's always something that you want to make sure um, uh, that you're uh, paying attention to and not using a trend segment that's too small and compressing your, your retracement lines. OK. so. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going to actually come back to this example here on the um, uh, euro, the EUU in this case, which is the FX option index that you can uh, trade options on the euro dollar currency pair. Uh, and we're, we're going to look and see, well, OK, once we've identified, you know, in this case, a potential resistance bounce that would indicate that we might have a renewal of the prior trend to the downside in this case, uh, how do we start to manage? So we've, we've answered a potential when question. So when do we enter the trade? What we want to, what we want to be able to do is identify, uh, it, we also want to identify um, the where, you know, how far is this uh, particular trade likely to go so we can start to plan. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.